Well, live from Philadelphia, it's Mr. Pritchard's Art Room. Well, hello, and welcome to the Stamp Collector. Huh? No. What? It, it, it's canceled too? Well, I, I took out all these stamps. Why can't someone tell me ahead? Of, someone can at least call. What was that? Hello? Yes, we are, Mr. Pritchard. The stamp collector has canceled. What? You're going to have to speak up. I'm talking into a pen. I said the stamp collector is canceled. You have to teach art today. Well, I guess that's canceled too. Well, let's teach some art. How's everyone doing today? Well, today we're going to work on a piece of abstract art. One of the artists we're going to study today is Jackson Pollock. Here we have a picture of old man Mr. Pritchard in Jackson Pollock's house. No, not all artists work on a table, an easel, or a desk. Some work directly on the floor. Jackson Pollock's floor was completely covered in thick paint. You might be saying, Mr. Pritchard, I thought all professional artists use an easel. You know, that desk that like stands up. No, not all artists use an easel. And here's Jackson Pollock working on the floor. And there's Jean-Michel Basquiat working on the floor. Hey, there's Mr. Pritchard's floor with all the art stuff. And no, we're not going to do this today. We are not going to be painting with our hair. I'm sorry. <coughs> now you might be saying, Mr. Pritchard, what are we doing today? Well, we're doing a Steve K special today. Not a Philly special, even though that was pretty good. No, we're doing a Steve K special. Steve K taught me this a long time ago, and it's a style of art in abstract. First, though, let's get back to some of the art history. Again, we're going to start with Jackson Pollock. Mr. Pritchard, it's just a bunch of paint thrown. Or maybe an art critic is yelling. It's just spaghetti. No, abstract expressionism is the name of the game here that Jackson Pollock was doing. An abstract expressionist artist has emotion within their art. To me, Jackson Pollock's artwork has excitement in it. It's very quickly done as the paint is being thrown. Did Jackson Pollock always work in the style? No. Originally, Jackson Pollock worked in a style similar to his art teacher, Thomas Hart Benton. This Old West painting proves this. Eventually, Jackson Pollock tried to find his own style. This male and female painting is made from shapes and lines. Eventually, Jackson Pollock settled in on what is called drip painting. Now, Mr. Pritchard, there seems to be no faces, people, within this abstract expressionist art. That's kind of the exciting thing. It's just a bunch of movement a lot of times, these lines and the drips of the paint. To me, it reminds me of music. And to me, it lets the person try to figure out the art on their own. You know, if Jackson Pollock didn't name a lot of these paintings, and a lot of times he didn't, it leaves the imagination up to the person outside of the artist, which is a pretty neat feature. Instead of a piece of artwork being called, I don't know, a house with two people, it was just called Untitled Number 2. And the person needs to try to figure out, well, what do these lines and dots mean? This is Helen Frankenthaler. She is also an abstract expressionist artist. Similar to Jackson Pollock, yet in her paintings, the drips are gigantic. 
They're not tiny little lines. And they run together, possibly to make other colors. Her paintings are a little different than Jackson's because I feel she uses brighter colors, these bright blue blueberries, these green mints, these red cherries. This is the last artist we're going to be studying today. This is Norman Lewis. Out of all this group, I think he's one of my favorites from the Abstract Expressionists. I love that he has more detailed within his artwork. This last painting is very similar to the style we're going to be doing today, our Steve K special. There is so many lines in this, but within the lines, it starts having the appearance of different shapes. The colors being used are very simple also. It's almost just the primary colors. Banana yellow, red cherry, all we're missing is blue blueberry. To me, this painting has this feeling of a roller coaster. The lines are going just everywhere. It has so much emotion and, to me, excitement. Mr. Pritchard, what's a Steve K special? Well, I was just saying, a Steve K special is very similar to the artwork of Norman Lewis with that detailed line work. Different than Jackson Pollock's throne drip painting and different than Helen Frankenthaler's giant colors running together. There's a Steve K special mural in my room that I did a long time ago with curvy and wavy lines and inside some of the lines where shapes are, they're colored in green mint, lemon yellow, and cherry red. So what Steve K taught me a long time ago was taking a writing instrument, a pen or a pencil, and just start putting lines around the piece of paper. Now there's no right or wrong way to do this. Don't start off thinking I'm going to draw a person or I'm going to draw a car or sun or clouds. Just start making lines. Maybe the lines are going slow because maybe you're having a very calm day or maybe you're very sad and they're going slow little tiny lines. Maybe they're slow straight lines. Maybe you're very happy and the lines are going zigzag and they're going very, very fast and they're going all over the place, very wavy. Maybe your lines are inspired by music and the lines might be following the beat of the music. After you're done, sometimes the lines form into shapes and it's within those shapes that we're going to work in filling them in. Now today I'm just going to be using pens. If you want, you can do yours completely in pencil. That's fine. They can be just completely shaded in in pencil. I have a few color pens laying around, so I plan on using a few of them. Well, let's get started. Well, here's the supplies I'm using today. I have notebook paper. Again, I like to stack it up. That way, when I push with my pencil or pen, it draws through to the back and makes a thick line that I can feel. This is great for my students that can't see. I took out a bunch of pens today. This one makes a very thin line. Almost the same, a little thicker. Now these two make a very thick line. They're also different colors too, and I know some of us out there in the world of art might want to use color. I think I'm mostly only going to use black and white from the paper. Now there is one thing I'm doing different today. I'm going to be working on the floor, similar to when we talked about with Jackson Pollock and Jean-Michel Basquiat. A lot of times I work on the floor. I don't work from an easel and I rarely work from a desk. About the only time I work from a desk is at school. Now you do not have to work on the floor if you don't want to. Sometimes I physically can't. Sometimes it hurts too much for me to work on the floor, so I don't work from the floor. A lot of times, to tell you the truth, I do my drawings just sitting down and drawing onto a piece of paper that I leave on my lap with a book, and I use that as a little tiny easel desk. Now, if you do decide to work on the floor today, please make sure not to make a mess. You might want to put a little newspaper down or something down so you don't make a mess on the carpet or the wooden floor. And yes, a lot of times I put newspaper down here too. I even use old magazines to cover the wooden floor so I don't make a mess onto the floor. Well, let's get started. Right now you're saying, 
Mr. Pritchard, how do I know you're drawing on the floor? Well, there's my feet. Let's get my name in there. Start off with the thinner pencil. Or pen, I should say. Again, very random. I'm not putting any thought into this. I'm just going to randomly start going. I might want to do a few practices before. Around and around. I'm going to switch to a thicker pen. Now, if you want, I took out some color pens. If you want to add some color, you can. What I like to do, as what Steve K had taught me, is try to find areas that make shapes. And then I color the inside.
Here's the finished product. Or maybe this way. Or this way. Or this way. Or how about a diamond shape? Now I can feel my artwork on the back using those multiple pieces of paper raised it up. Another good idea for my students visually impaired is using masking tape to form those lines and then coloring in the shapes that one would feel. Now I sped up the video a lot because this took a long time to color in. I was doing little tiny circles or filling it in the border first. Anywhere I made a mistake that the color spilled out, I went back to the original black and made my lines a little thicker to cover the spills. Now the Steve K special reminds me very much of the artwork of Norman Lewis. There's a lot of detailed line work in there. A little different than Jackson Pollock's drip paintings and Helen Frankenthaler's giant color spills coming together. Now there is no right or wrong way to do this style of art. The best part about this art, this abstract expressionism, is emotion. When I was doing mine, it was very windy outside, and it's almost like the wind influenced my line work. Sometimes it would speed up and slow down depending how I could hear the wind. I went into this piece of artwork with no thoughts of what I wanted it to look like. Almost like dancing, I just let it happen. I let the mistakes happen. There's even fingerprints in on here because I rest my fingers on the artwork a lot to keep my paper from moving. I hope you enjoyed the Steve K special. I know I did. And I hope you're all safe and well. And until next time, stay creative.